Hello everyone, welcome back to Tea with Tea. This is your host, Talia Dominguez, and we're back with another episode. This has been a very, very highly requested episode. My girls, my girls were down bad. But anyways, the episode for today is going to be the best breakup advice you have ever been given. So I'm going to take off like my spiritual girly cap for right now, and I'm going to put like my big sis cap on because I'm going to give you this advice how I wish someone would have given it to me when I was going through a breakup and I think it's going to be effective. I think it's going to be amazing. It is going to be a lot of information being thrown at you. So if you are somewhere where you can grab like a pen and paper to jog down some of these steps and advice, I would think it would be best. Or if not, just come back to this episode later on to get the most out of it. So let's just begin. I know by experience, breakups suck. Like, I know the big energetic shifts that breakups bring and how pretty much you feel like your heart is being ripped out of your chest, stomped on, spit on, and then run over by a bus. I've been there. But apart from stating the obvious, breakups are especially hard because most of the time, we have seen the breakup coming for months, for years, and we have tried everything in our power to make the relationship work. This is usually how breakups go. It's uh, two people trying to make it work. It doesn't work. Someone doesn't want to change or they both don't want to change. And it ends up in constant breakups. Sometimes they're like back-to-back breakups, get back together, this type of toxic pattern. But we're really going to dive in today to just like when you break up and you really are determined. And you're like, I don't want this person in my life anymore. This relationship is not for the best of me. I really want to get over them. That's who this advice is for. This advice is not for the girl that wants to get back with him. Get out, log off, because this is not this is not the episode for you then. What you're going to get out of this episode is pretty much a higher sense of self-esteem. You're going to be motivated and inspired to want better for yourself. And you're also going to learn the reason why boundaries and sticking to your own word is the most powerful thing you could ever do. If you're going through a breakup right now or... You can sense a breakup coming. I just want to prepare you and let you know that, yes, things are about to drastically change for you. And change is not always comfortable. Change is not always welcoming. But change does what it's necessary. When the universe or God removes a person or a relationship out of your life, it is for a reason. And you can't ignore the signs that you've been given, even if you want to. You can't. Because the sign is just going to get louder, the reality check is just going to get bigger, and the, t- the situation is just going to get worse. Until you learn the fact that this breakup is being sent to you as a liberation for your own safety, for your own self-growth, and for you to take now a different path. Before I get all philosophical and spiritual about what breakups are actually, and uh, on a spiritual higher sense level, what they bring forward, I'm just going to give you the most real and down-to-earth advice I've ever been given. Okay, so let's begin. So advice number one that I have here written down is you don't need to pretend that you're fine or that you're a hardcore bad bitch right after a breakup. And I'm going to tell you why. It is because grieving is necessary. And I'm not talking about you need to go and cry in the four corners and tell everybody that you're broken and tell everybody that you're just like lost without him i'm not talking about that you could do that with the people that you feel safe to do so what i'm talking about here when i say that you don't need to pretend that you're fine or to be a hardcore bitch means that creating an extra barrier creating a hard shell during a time that you're feeling vulnerable and during a time where you're in a lot of pain it's only going to block the flow of healing from coming in the advice here tied in with all of this is that you need to learn how to honor your feelings and honor the relationship and honor the lesson that you just learned You need to give yourself that time to grieve and you need to give yourself that time to get back to normal, to get back to being fine, to get back to feeling like a bad bitch. And there's this like negative stigma around like after a breakup, being vulnerable and everyone thinks like, oh, the couple should move on quickly. Like, who are they going to move on to? Oh, are they living their life? Do they look happy? If you know two people just broke up, first of all, you know that they're both not going to be happy. One person might be happy that they're moving on with their lives and the other person might be in distraught. But necessarily, both people are going through drastic changes in their life and no one's going to necessarily be happy about it. So if you're in a situation like this, I don't want you to feel the pressure from the outside in of pretending that you're okay and pretending that 
you know what's happening or why it's happening. It is it is normal during a breakup to feel like shit and to feel like someone died because someone just died and that's you because the old version of you who was in that relationship, that old version of you who felt all those feelings, that person is is dying. That person is exiting. That person is just a memory now because even though you're in pain and even though you feel like oh my god like i'm never going to move on from this you're literally in the midst of change and of creation of rebuilding someone new moving on to advice number two i highly and when i say highly i mean highly recommend limiting or cutting off contact with your ex i don't care i don't care if you guys own a dog together i don't care I don't care. I understand if you have a kid together. I understand if you guys share a home when you're moving out in a situation. I understand that it's going to be hard to limit or cut off conversation right away. However, I am talking to the people who can implement this way more and way harsher than others. And I'm going to tell you why I recommend limiting or cutting off combo. It is not going to get easier to heal a wound if every single day you're picking at it. There's no reason to go over the situation over and over with your ex. There's no reason why you guys already talked about what you're breaking up five times and you're still messaging him a sixth time to figure out why you guys really broke up and because you have some things that you need to get off your chest. You should have gotten the things off your chest the moment that you were breaking up or a post-breakup conversation to settle the dust, and then you should limit or cut off conversation. When I say limit, I mean like, you should only hit me up if there was a death in the family and you want to be kind. Thank you. You should only be hitting me up if I left my car keys. Okay, I need my car keys. But don't be hitting your ex up because you left your toothbrush there and now you guys are broken up and you need to go pick it up. That's when you actually need to own up and take accountability for the fact that you are there picking out your wounds when you should be actually doing the steps necessary to heal the wounds, to close the wounds, and to move on. That's when I said limiting, right? It's when extreme cases that you guys need to talk and you need to have a conversation. Other than that, just cut off the limit. Cut off the limit if it means blocking, if it means... Changing your number, I don't know how bad the breakup could be, but I do know that cutting off conversation, it is going to facilitate the process. And I also know that cutting off conversation from going, from talking to someone every single day to them not talking at all, it's very hard. And it's very hard to get used to like that emptiness and that void that they're going to leave in your life. But you are going to learn to feel that void and that silence with other things that are actually good for you and healthy for you. Let me just touch in a little further on the subject. What this is going to teach you, limiting and cutting off conversation with your ex, is going to teach you boundaries. It's going to teach you space. But that space, the lessons, that, that, that space and that silence after a breakup is where all the knowledge and all the lessons are going to come and rushing in. And it's going to teach you self-control. Because you know damn well you've gotten back with him 14 times. And you might get back with him the 15 times. So why don't you take that step into cutting off and limiting combo so that you could actually move on from this relationship. So you could finally cut off your narcissistic ex. When you could just start the new life that you've been chasing for so long, yet you still keep doing the same choice over and over and over again. Oh, and let me not forget. When I say limiting and cutting, I also mean stalking his page. Yes, sister. And I'm going to tell you why as well. When you tell God, when you tell the universe, whoever higher force you believe in, when you tell the higher force, hey, I want this person removed from my life. I know they're not good for me. I want to move on. I want better for myself. I want a better future. The universe and the energy around us picks up on that because that's your affirmation. That is what you want, right? But then the universe, God, the higher force is going to ask you, to meet that vibration. And guess what? If you're stalking, if you're searching, if you're liking a picture, if you're messaging him, then the universe is confused, just like you're confused. The universe saying, well, I'm trying to help her and I'm trying to give her all the opportunities and chances to move on from this person. I'm trying to facilitate it for her. Yet she's not helping herself. So you're never going to get from point A to point B because you're literally in the middle between your past and your future trying to grip onto, onto one or the other. It's going to cause a lot, a lot of confusion. So 
I mean to include in the space of advice to also stop stalking him. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Stop doing it. Which leads me to the conversation about advice number three. If you're going through a breakup, a good piece of advice that I can give you is that you need to rely on a good support system, meaning family and friends who actually want the best for you. When I emphasize on the fact that I actually want the best for you, because people would think, of course, my family and friends want the best for me. No. Sometimes your family is going to give you the wrong advice because they're going to give you the advice that's going to keep you doing the same mistakes they just made for the sake of you and your partner staying together. Your friends might give you trying with good intentions, trying to give you good advice, but they're going to tell you advice that's just adding fuel to the fire, saying like, oh girl, F him, let's go, let's dress up and be bad bitches and let's pass by so he can see you. All of this is self-sabotaging behavior. So I'm not saying that these people in your life are one ill for you. I'm saying that you need to know who in your family and who in your friend group you can go because after a breakup, the people around you can either help you build yourself or literally help you destroy yourself so it's really our choice and it actually means that we need to take accountability for the people that we go to during these times to seek advice to seek being vulnerable with and sometimes just to be listened to and cry and you know you know what breakups bring your support systems should do exactly that support you in your decision if your decision was to break up with this person then your support system should help you and find ways to support you in that decision whether that means that they're going to invite you to doing healthy things that they know you love to do whether it is your family letting you know that they're there for you and that no matter what they're going to support you these are all healthy ways What to avoid is the people that are going to come in with distractions, with things that are not really going to fill that emptiness or help you with your pain. They are just going to tell you that you just just need to be okay. Just be fine. Come on, let's go. Move on. No. You need to find people that you can let go with. You need to find people that you can be vulnerable about your emotions and people who are going to give you back the same energy you have given them throughout their hard times. You know, when I was going through a breakup, I loved going to people who I knew were going to remind me of who I was before the relationship. Advice number three is really just about finding a safe space for you to be broken in. You just need to find your own cocoon where you can go through the process that a breakup is. You do not need to go out there and seek love from anybody else. You do not need to go and put yourself out there and try to, you know, like just move on. Sometimes the best thing you can do to move on is sit still. Just sit still with the emotion because the emotion, if you don't feel it, it gets trapped. So you might as well sit in your room, give it a good cry, Give it a good, like, oh my God, victimize yourself a little bit. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm going through this. Let it pass. And then let the emotion pass because after that emotion comes the fact of like, oh my God, I was tripping out yesterday. It's actually not that bad. I feel better today, you know? So I always tell people not to victimize themselves, but at the end of the day, during the little breakup, of course you feel like a victim, especially if someone has done you wrong. You feel like, oh my God, why has this happened to me? And why is this happening to me? And it is okay to momentarily feel that way, but you do not... Take that feeling and drag it on and make it your whole identity. Advice number four for my girls who are going through a breakup. You need to find a creative outlet to focus all your emotions into. And we're all creative beings. Even the person who thinks like, oh, I just work a nine to five. I don't care to do anything creative. We all create things. We all create our lives. We all create our reality. We all create our schedules. Literally, we're all creators. And when you go through highly charged emotional states such as you do in a breakup we need to find ways to express those emotions before they block us entirely from feeling so you know how a lot of times people you might after a breakup numb like I've been numb for the past year I've been numb for the past three months I feel absolutely nothing my emotional um capabilities absolutely closed this happens because you've not expressed these emotions through any outlet, not letting your friends know, not putting into your journal, not writing a poem about them, not gone to the gym. These emotions are all inside and now they're so bottled up that they have entirely blocked you from feeling in general. 
And let me tell you something. This is more common than people like to hear. It sounds scary. Oh, you're numb. Oh, that person's numb. But the majority of the people that I speak to are numb. And I only realize it because I ask them, like, what do you want? And they can't tell me what they want. That means that they're so out of touch with their own selves that they have not even tried to just open up the jar and let it out. So find a creative outlet for you to put your emotions onto. People have different things that they like. Some people, for example, which is a very common one, people have a breakup and they just start going to the gym. And the gym becomes a source of therapy and a source of inspiration and motivation for them. They can see their body starting to change. They can see that they're becoming stronger. Now the stronger body is also letting you know that you have a stronger mind and they learn discipline. And this helps them to get over a breakup because it starts in, like giving them a boost of self-esteem, of self-acceptance, of self-improvement. This is healthy. This is healthy. On the other side, there's some people like me, for example, that I started to journal and write poetry after one of my breakups. It was what kind of saved me during that time. It was almost like every single time that I picked up that journal and I wrote, I was speaking from me to me. And there was no one else in the room to judge me. I didn't have to talk and like nag my friend every single time I felt sad. It was just like, you know what? I'm going to sit with myself and I'm going to see what answers and what pours out of me. Another example of turning that pain into power is a lot of people start reading they dive into self-help books to understand themselves deeper, to understand what happened in their relationship, to understand how to better themselves so they don't make the same mistakes they just made, how to attract a better partner. These are all healthy ways and things for you to do after a breakup. Because the reality is that you need to help yourself get up. You get me? Your support system can only do so much. But there comes a point during the breakup that it's like, hey, you're in charge of your life. You're in charge of how you're going to move on from this. And you need to do the right steps to get yourself up and to pick yourself up from it. To go back on my own experience after breakups. I went through so many breakups. (laughs) That's just the truth. I've gone through a lot of breakups. I think like my biggest lesson in this life that I came to learn was my own self-worth and my own self-value. And I was tested with men until literally I couldn't anymore. And I was like, God, just take me. Okay, just kidding. But I was like, God, just take me to a better place. Okay, take me to where I know my worth. Take me to where I'm a strong woman. Take me to where I can tell the difference between love and lust. Tell me and tell me where what I need to do. Tell me what I need to do in order to get out of the situation that I'm in. And God spoke clearly and loudly how he usually does. So there was a point in my breakups in, in this toxic relationship where God was like, enough is enough. I'm not going to keep throwing the life saver at you if you're going to continue to choose to drown. Simple. And When that moment came where I was like, I absolutely feel like I have rocks tied to my feet and I'm drowning in this sea, I realized that it was my own lack of accountability. It was all my my own lack of awareness, was my own will to actually move on from the situation that was actually holding me down and keeping me down. That is when I found poetry and poetry really was an outlet for me to be vulnerable with myself and to... I showcased it online on my social media. I actually didn't care. My social media is my life. I choose to put out there what I want and what I'm going through. And it became like a learning curve for me because I was so scared of being vulnerable and being seen as like, oh my God, pobrecita, like, you know, she just went through this and she just went through that. That I was like, you know what? I'm not going to victimize myself. I've gone through these things. I've got my heart broken. I've gotten cheated on. I've gotten played. And that's fine. Because at the end of the day, if you play me, God's going to strike you. (laughs) Okay, no, for real, for real. Let's get back into the topic. But I truly knew that I was like, if I don't put all of this that I feel into something that I love and into something that I can see all my pain turn into something beautiful, then I'm going to just hold this all in and I'm going to become sick of the mind, of the heart, of whatever it was. So I began sharing my poetry online. And I was getting so much traction. I mean, like people were like, oh my God, you're so brave for sharing what you're going through. I'm going through something similar. And that's actually how like this whole like healing me and my community really started connecting because 
I was done with trying to be like a bad bitch on the gram. I was like, you know what? I am a bad bitch, but right now I'm also a sad ass bitch. And you guys need to know it. And you need to know that you're not alone during this during these times of heartbreak. And you need to know that I am going through hard things too and that I'm not perfect. So this step during during the breakup actually brought so much healing to me because I didn't feel alone. Once I put my pain out there and I wore it proudly, I was like, these are my scars and so what? That actually gave me so much power. I felt so empowered within myself because I was like, I have the power not to only be strong, but to be so soft and vulnerable in the eyes of others. And that takes real bravery. To go deeper into the spiritual side of relationships, the relationships that we go through in life are either karmic relationships or they're soulmate relationships. I'm going to break down for you guys pretty much the difference and how to detect which one is which. A karmic bond, it's nature, it's usually a really intense relationship that brings in feelings of being like on a roller coaster, high, high, high highs, low, low, low lows. And this is pretty much the dynamic throughout the whole relationship. The karmic bonds bring in karmic lessons, they're big challenges, and they usually invoke a lot of personal growth for ourselves. In a karmic bond, you usually feel a lot of turbulence a lot of emotional breakthroughs, a lot of drama-filled scenarios, and it's pretty much a hot mess. That's what it is. A karmic bond is a hot mess, but it is necessary because it literally comes into your life for the karma between you and that person to get settled, and pretty much you have the free will to close that chapter with this person and close that soul contract that you have with them, or to drag it on for another lifetime. And that sounds like hell. So your choice, your choice. But the difference is that a soulmate connection brings in harmony. It brings in support. Usually the relationship is very nurturing. And even though with this soulmate connection, you're still going to go through hard times. Those hard times feel like you're working as one together and not versus one another. The purpose of a soulmate connection is literally to enhance who you already are. It brings in companionship. This soulmate connection brings in like mutual understanding. You just feel understood by that person. Like this person really gets you and even the deepest parts of you. Um, And this person brings you joy. You get the, I'm like, do y'all get the gist of it? Like it's so different, a karmic bond between a soulmate connection. Like these are things that we should educate each other on so that we could detect what this person is and what this relationship is bringing to the table for us. So I hope the information that I gave you today helps you a little bit. And I hope the advice I've given you regarding breakups also helps you if you're going through a breakup or you can sense a breakup coming forward. There was a lot of information thrown at you today. I know that. But I do hope that it was for the best. I do hope that everything really, really, really like dove deep into you and you got a deeper understanding of who you are who you want to be and how you are in control of your reality and uh, that you're not a victim that you can move on from a toxic breakup that you can move on from a toxic past that you can heal your trauma and that you can go and find true real soulmate love connections out there for you so that's all I have for you today it's clearly turning dark if you're watching me so I need to finish but I'm sending every single one of you so much love so much healing you guys already know what to do leave a review rate my podcast dm me if you have any thoughts about this episode so we can talk about it further comment what you think about it so I can reply to you I read every single comment and every single dm I love you all and I'll see you back here next time